Now let's take a look at how we can apply a smart warp mesh. There are a couple ways you can create a mesh. You can do it manually, or you can have Moho take care of the process for you. And a mesh allows us to control layers in a non-destructive way. We can use a mesh to, for instance, adjust the way the head looks for this character, even though it's a bitmap. Traditionally, we can't really do much beyond bind it to some bones and do some other basic things like that in terms of design. But with a mesh, you can actually mold and deform and change and animate this head or any part of the character any way you see fit. And while it is useful for bitmap characters, it can be used for vector-based characters as well. So with that, we're going to have Moho create a mesh for our head. And we can come over here to the head layer. And with that selected, I'm going to come up here to draw and then choose create mesh layer. So here it's going to go through and trace out the layer and create a path for this mesh. And you can see now we have this blue outline with some highlights in between the points. Now, another thing it did is you can see it created some points up here and it might be grabbing something from the original bitmap. And we don't really need those particular points there. So we're just going to take the select points tool and come in here, select them and remove them with the delete key. There you go. Now, you'll also notice when we created this mesh, we have a new layer that has appeared over the bitmap. And so as we just now went in and altered those points, we were on that head warp layer. Now, if we were to come in here and let's say go to frame six, and actually let's come back here really quick, and I'm gonna remove all the animation from that bone layer just so this is easier to see. So I'm just on that bone layer. I'm going to click and drag over these keyframes and then just hit delete. And then we can come back here to the head warp layer and go past frame zero. And I'm just going to click on the transform points tool right up here and start to move things around. And as you can see, I'm able to manipulate the bitmap and I can even animate this. So if I go to frame 24 and I extend this out, you can see that it's actually being animated. And so what you can end up doing is hiding the mesh and then you'll just see what's occurring with the character. But here's something else to keep in mind. Let's say we want to create a head turn. Well, we could start the process of moving this head, but as you can see, when we get to a certain point where we have the eyes, we're no longer able to do that because the eyes are clashing. They're not moving along with the mesh. Well we can actually add more than one layer to a mesh. So I'll go back to frame zero and let's go to the top here where we have head. I'm just going to expand the eyelids layer and make sure that everything is visible in terms of the images. So everything is visible. We can go into the eyes and make sure that we drop all these down to make sure that we can see everything there as well. The nose, the mouths, and then we have the head. And we can leave the ears out of this for right now. So we're just going to double click on open mouth, which is the layer above head warp. So just double click. And so with open mouth selected, we're just going to go all the way up to the first image that we see, which in this case is eyelid left. We'll hold and shift and click to select all of these layers. We want to click on image, come down to select warp layer and then choose head warp from the list and click OK. So now if we were to come back here, make sure we have everything deselected and come back here to the head warp layer. And let's just go to frame six and we start to move this. You can see now we're able to move the eye as it's being accounted for with this mesh. And the same can be applied for any part of this. So if we brought this in further, eventually the mouths would be affected and all that. However, this mesh is pretty basic. 
it doesn't really account for some of the details that we have going on in the head. So we can help Moho out by adding some points to this mesh. We're just going to go back here to frame zero, and we're going to grab the add point tool. Now you'd probably want to be more strategic with this, but we're just going to quickly add in some additional points. You can see as I'm clicking and dragging, and as I'm adding in these points, it's creating additional triangles that will allow us to move the mesh around. So if I come in here and just add some points like this, and you can see as I add different points, even to this line, it's making those adjustments. And the more points you have, the more control you'll have. But there's also a point where having too many points can be a little bit of a detriment. So there has to be a nice little balance to it. And again, it really helps to accommodate for all of the layers that you have going on here. So maybe come down like this, kind of come down like that. Try to accommodate for the mouth and the nose. And then we could also add in some lines here to cover in some details, to have a little bit more control. And there you go. So now if we were to go and jump to, again, let's say frame six, and we come in and we start to move things around, you can see now with these points, we have the ability to modify this further. So if we wanted to create that head turn now, we definitely could. And also, as I'm manipulating things, you can also continue to animate in different ways. So as you can see, I've really altered the way this pupil looks, but if I come back here to the bone layer, I can also come in, making sure I can select the pupils here, and move this around. And you can see as it moves around, it's also being affected by the mesh. So that's kind of interesting. Now, another thing to note too, as you are building up your mesh, and I'm just gonna come over here back to the warp here and remove what I did here because it's not really that pleasing to look at since I was just playing around with it. What we can do is test this out with an animation. And I'm just gonna come up over here to the bone layer once again, and we're gonna create some bone animation. And if I were to, as an example, move the head, you can see that we're having an issue where the mask is not following the head and it just does not look right. So when you create a mesh, it's very important that that mesh is tied to a layer that makes sense. And in this case, it's going to be the head layer. So we want to layer bind the warp to the head. So that way, when he moves his head, the mesh will move along with it. It's kind of like how we set up the pupils with that pupil bone. And just one more trick, when you are working with multiple layers like we are here, you might find it best to take that warp layer and bring it above all of your other layers. So if I place it right above eyelids here, it might be easier to work with then. So that way you can see all of the points and lines because I noticed before that my eyes were covering up some of the lines during the animation, so it might be harder to take a look at that. But with that now, you can have it at the top, you can move around, you can manipulate what you need to manipulate, create a head turn. You can also, if you want, use the magnet tool, which can be very useful to mass move points. So you could come in here and really start to mold this if you wanted to create that head turn. And I can tell already that I would need to add some more points and do some more refining in order to get a head turn working here. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how it can easily be manipulated as we continue to work inside of Moho.